Welcome back to another iDoctor UK video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace the screen and also the LCD on the iPad 10th gen or the iPad 10.9. The main thing about this is replacing the glass because the LCD is fairly simple anyway. So to get started, you can use a heat gun or a hairdryer for this, but I will place the iPad face down on the heat mat for about 10 minutes. My heat mat's set to about 75 degrees C and the purpose of warming it up is to soften the adhesive that sits on the edges of the iPad holding that digitizer in place. Once the iPad's had five minutes on the heat mat I'm going to flip it back over. This one's going to be awkward because it's got this silly little ring thing on it and I don't want to remove that because the customer will probably be grumpy with me but what I'm going to do is start off here where I can see some of the adhesive and I'm going to begin by trying to pull out as much adhesive as I can which of course instantly snaps. So we'll go to plan B, which will be apply some isopropyl alcohol to the edge of the iPad, just so it's soaking in, in, the, in the gap between the screen and the digitizer. In this instance, I'm not too worried about damaging the LCD because of course it is already broken. Obviously, if you're replacing the digitizer only, then you are going to be conscious that you don't want to damage the LCD, which is the bit underneath the glass. So what we're going to do to prevent that is insert a single sided razor blade, just enough to make a small gap in between the chassis and the digitizer. And then we insert this small plastic guitar pick and we're just going to run it along the edge, only inserting it a couple of millimeters at a time because we don't want to touch that LCD. As I'm, as I'm working through, you can see I'm sort of lifting it up like that so that I can get the pick behind it and cut through the adhesive. I'm lifting it up with my fingers too. And I'm just gonna work my way around the edge. There's only a very thin piece of adhesive holding these on. It's not like older iPads where there's a bit more adhesive. So I'm just gonna lift up the digitizer and cut my way through to detach it from the chassis. Once we're into this, we can see that it opens up like a book from the back cover, like all iPads, except on this one, the digitizer cables are just here and here. Notice how I never touch this right hand edge. It's not important because it opens up like that. We don't need to do anything with it. Now that it's removed, I'm gonna take it back to the bench where we'll take it apart further. So just a little note, if you've ever got one of these sort of pulley ring things on there, if you pop it on a bit of tape like that and rest it on there, it means it'll sit fairly flat. Little top secret tip from the eye doctor himself. To begin disassembling this iPad, we're gonna remove the eight T2 screws that are holding down the LCD, four on either side. If your LCD is in good condition, of course, be careful and avoid touching it because any smudges or marks on the LCD can be difficult to remove. Once we've got the four on the right edge, we're going to move on to the left hand edge now and begin removing the other six. This kind of reminds me of the iPad mini 2 which was held down by a lot of screws. So now that those six screws are removed we're going to lift the LCD away from the chassis. To remove the LCD, I'm going to go in with the spudger at the top here and begin prying upwards to release it. And then this comes away like all iPad screens, lifting up a bit like a, I don't know, a notepad or something. It opens up towards the bottom. Now we'll continue tearing down the device, starting off by disconnecting power from, from it by unscrewing the battery screw and then placing a small piece of plastic between the battery and the motherboard to isolate power. Now that the power is isolated, I'm gonna remove the two crosshead screws that hold down the LCD cover and one of the digitizer connectors. Then I'll use some tweezers to lift off the shield and then disconnect these two connectors using the plastic spudger. That means that the LCD can now be lifted. It's stuck down a little bit, but not hard at all. Take that out of the way and put it safely for reinstallation later if you are keeping hold of your LCD. Remove these two screws now on this shield at the top. 
use tweezers to remove the shield and then again with the plastic spudger to disconnect the digitizer connector. Finally, there's a couple of screws holding down the front microphone and sensor. Remove the two screws for the shield again, tweezers to get the shield out of the way, and then we only need to disconnect this one connector because the other one is for the front camera. With those disconnected, we can now separate the digitizer from the chassis. And we'll concentrate now on removing this microphone for installation onto our new digitizer. The easiest way to remove this is by using a little bit of heat. And for this, I'll use my hot air gun set to 200 degrees C. A heat gun or hairdryer will do exactly the same job. It's just less expensive. Once that's heated up, softening the adhesive, I'm gonna get under it with this scraping tool and peel it off. Just like that. So with that sensor removed, it's ready to reinstall onto our new digitizer. I managed to pick up this digitizer from iParts for you, and it cost about £25. And the only real preparation that we need to do for this, you can see that it's already got those two magnets attached to it, got the digitizer cables. I'm just going to peel off these bits of peel here to protect the digitizer cables for transit. And then we're going to resecure the microphone and sensor back into place. So to line this up, we're aiming for the center of the mic to go into the center of that little hole there. And once it's placed down, I'll apply a small bead of UV curing adhesive onto the edge of the sensor there, then use a UV lamp to cure it. Then I'll do the same. Then I'll do the same with some UV glue on the opposite side, just a small amount here. And again, cure that with the UV lamp to allow the glue to set. Once that's secured, we're gonna move on to the preparation of the chassis now. Make sure that this chassis is absolutely spotlessly clean, ready to receive the new digitizer. The easiest way to do this I've found is one of these number 17 X-Acto blades, usually found on eBay or Amazon. And I'm just gonna scrape off all the excess glue before we use acetone to wipe up any leftovers. Just be careful as you're going around with the blade because you don't want to damage any of the sensors like the ambient light sensor, which is this one here, or of course, damage the battery or any other components. Once you've been round and cleaned all the excess adhesive off with the blade, then I'm going to take some acetone on a microfiber cloth and carefully wipe through all the edges to remove any leftover adhesive that we might have missed with the blade. This iPad looks like it's had a particularly difficult life, so I'm gonna spend a little bit of client time. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time cleaning up the internals as well. But I'll probably just fly through that off camera. Now that it's cleaned up, we're gonna start by offering up our digitizer and reconnecting the digitizer connectors. So I'm gonna to start top to bottom. So this one first, line it up and apply pressure to reconnect it. Then we've got the microphone and front sensor. Finally, this bottom digitizer connector. I'll just pop something weighted behind it and then resecure two out of the three shields that hold it down. Starting off with this one, which is kind of shaped like a razor blade then secure the two crosshead screws. Next, we've got that one for the microphone and front camera. Place that down and again, re-secure the two crosshead screws. All these crosshead screws on, that hold down these flex cables are all the same size, so don't worry if you mix them up when you're taking it apart. The only ones that are different are the LCD screws and the battery screw, so just be aware of that. We need to get our new LCD out and ready to install. Again, I bought this one from iParts for you, and I believe it cost about £170 for 
non-trade members. I've just realized comparing these side by side that there's not one of these little bars on this one. So maybe avoid the eye parts for you ones or just double check that it's got this little rail on it because this looks like it's going to be awkward to remove. Although I'll take it back if we can remove it with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and a guitar pick, so we'll see. That wasn't too bad to remove, so I'll let them off. The guy at iPods have actually been quite kind to me recently, so we'll let them off the hook. That's just a, another layer to it if you are replacing the LCD. I'm gonna remove the old adhesive. I'm gonna clean off the old adhesive first. So the way that I'm gonna re-secure this, I'm gonna place this onto the iPad first. So the way that I'm gonna make sure that this is back together properly, I'm gonna secure these screws onto the iPad first, add a little bit of tester tape on there, and then secure the LCD into place because I'm just very conscious that it'll be out of line slightly. So, and then you'd not be able to get these six T2 screws in, so. This is the first time that I've replaced one of these LCDs and it's the first time that I've seen an LCD without this bracket on the back. So I think if we line it up first, secure it down, apply tape, that's the only way to do it, to make sure that it's perfect. So with those six screws secured, I'm gonna take a, a small length of five millimeter tesser tape, secure it onto this edge just here, just in front of the uh, of those T2 screws that we laid down. And that's very, very similar, if not the same as what Apple have done. Although if I was to do it again, I'd probably use three mil tape just because it's overlapping a little bit. Moving on now to reconnecting the LCD. I'm gonna line it up, hovering over the connector. That little click there tells me that it's secured. I can now remove this plastic pick to reconnect power to the device. Then we'll go for this shield to go over the top there. Two final crosshead screws. Make sure that you line up this shield the right way around, because it will only go one way. And then secure down this screw first. And then you can push the other one into place. Then get the other one into place. And then finally, we can get the battery connector re-secured down. Now we can place the LCD into place, make sure, sure that it's gonna sit in okay, so it can go into its sort of final resting place. So I'm gonna make sure that they're in line first, over there, and then I'm gonna sort of just drop it down and let it sit. Then I will re-secure one into each corner first. So this one and that one, so that it lines up. Because what I don't want to do is put pressure where I've put the tape and it'd be out of line. And I'm really worried about that. So with these four now re-secured, now I'll apply a bit of pressure along this edge to make sure that that back of that LCD is secured to that rail what we've been installed. So now it's a good time to turn on your device and test that it's working fully. I'm not gonna show me testing it, but for the purpose of this video, the next step that I wanna take is these digitizers come with the tesser tape pre-applied to them. So before and we go any further, I'm gonna pull off the backing sheet on all the adhesive. All except this bottom row. Now because we installed a new LCD, I'm gonna remove the film from that by just peeling it back like that. So now we just got the final film on the back of the digitizer that we need to remove. And then we can close up this iPad. Make sure that there's no dust in there always. It's really important that you don't want to close it up only to find that you've got a bit of dust under it and then this final step here is just to remove this little bit of adhesive that sits in here and we can close it up and then we're just going to apply gentle pressure around all four edges to make sure that it's secure 
and then we can test all functionality before handing it back to our customer. That just about completes this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.